welcome to Oh Brother, a podcast with three brothers trying to figure it all out. With your hosts, Brandon, Colin, and Aaron. This week's show, a legit zoo zoo. Hello. Ah, hello. Hi. Hello. Brandon. This is working. Brandon. We well, did say 8.30 and you are early. <gasps> oh my gosh. This is... Oh. Ooh, yeah. No, sorry. Doop, doop, doop. My goodness. Sounds like your fault. Yeah, yeah, it's all my fault, actually. It's so. really all of your fault. Oh, my it bad. Like it. Agreed. My bad. Ah, hello. Oh. <laughs> What's up? It is a night. Uh-oh. No. Do tell. Oh. oh. Uh, we had a dog-sitting client that said i'm going to pick my dogs up the 29th at noon which is a little whatever uh so megan and the kids are actually uh down at dad's house right now and i was gonna stay i was gonna stay so they're down there and i'm gonna go tomorrow and uh, be with them and we're taking Monday off so we can just have a longer weekend down there. Uh, kind of not necessarily last minute, but we didn't have any dogs this weekend, but was we there, had dog, was we there had another dog. spider in the house? No, right. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. uh, okay. at least, not, well, I mean, yes, there's always spiders in this house, but none visible. <laughs> okay. Yeah. They were remaining, uh, hidden. they were remaining hidden. So good job. Little eight legged dudes. Um, but the, the, the owner stay said, reclusive. Stay, yeah, stay re- Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Keep your namesake. Um, <laughs> so she had said that uh, she's going to pick up the dogs at noon on the 29th. Like, cool. Uh, so I. Um, Which listeners is tomorrow? Tomorrow. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and so we. I, so Megan, kids left earlier this afternoon. Uh, I had an interview for the other show uh, at 6. And at 5.45, she called Megan and said, oh, I'm an hour and 15 minutes away. <clears throat> ah. Granted, she had to drive nine hours to get to her destination. What the- she had already been on the road for eight hours <laughs> when she what? decides to text us, text us that she is an hour away. <laughs> <laughs> And 18 hours early. Yes. <laughs> yes. More importantly, 18 <laughs> hours <laughs> early. But why? So I'm getting ready to go into an interview that's going to last an hour and a half. And so I'm frantically trying to get the dogs ready, get all their stuff together, get bowls cleaned get food put back in find all their toys get it packed so that whenever she knocks on the door at seven o'clock or seven fifteen, i can pause the interview run down put the dogs you know get get them out the door and then come back up and finish mm-hmm. well in my haste and then you know the interview's going and it's like oh this okay this i'm gonna have a lot of editing with this one um it just keeps going uh the door knocks i run downstairs let the dog get you know, whatever and then uh finished the interview at 7 <laughs> 40 it took an hour and 40 hour and 45 minutes uh they just kept going and then at the end they wanted to talk about other topics they wanted to talk about and all sorts of stuff and i was like ha ha uh, <laughs> the one time this is a problem <laughs> yeah this is really sweet um if you think of anything else, you could just email me. Okay, I gotta go. And so <laughs> <laughs> I run downstairs. There's a part two. Bye. I yeah, guess yeah, whatever. And then I get on the phone with Megan. And then I'm like, there's also stuff in the house that I was trying to get done uh, so that I can just leave tomorrow now. All of a sudden, it's like, well, I was going to have all tomorrow morning to clean the house and do all this stuff, but I'm not going to have that anymore. So I was going to clean. And then, and then I look at the kitchen counter and I'm like, oh, there's all the dog's food that I did not give back to the lady. Uh, <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> uh, so I was like, 
I messaged right. her and was like, hey, I'm so sorry. Uh, I still have all of their dry food. I'm going to leave really early in the morning. I'm just going to put it on the porch and you come by and get it. Okay, thanks. Because, <laughs> oh. So. Either that or Kobe. It's time for some second supper. Kobe oh, Kobe. Yeah. It's a lot of food. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's more than his body weight right now. So. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> yeah. It's a lot of food. <laughs> so. Yeah, and then I made some coffee, and came up here, sat down. So we're all good. There you go. Yeah, okay. Uh, but that was my night. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, no. So far. So far. So what's been up with you guys? Uh, Not a whole bunch, really. Just sort of been going, right? It's that time of year at school where it's just like, yep. Still going, right? It's kind of like <laughs> <laughs> trying to make good quarter ends next Friday. So I've made a big long list of all my missing assignments, and I was like, "Hey, hey guess what? Uh oh, hello! <laughs> the tax collectors come. The bill is due. Boom, done. <laughs> so that's next week. Quarter ends. Grades are due." Conspicuously basketball starts. Children. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Are you getting this connection? Hello. Yes. <laughs> Dangle the carrot and the stick. Yes. Uh, so that's uh Okay. That's it. Just getting ready to do new stuff. And we're got we're gotta do a <clears throat> uh every because we do the PBIS thing, which is like the positive behavior something support. I don't even remember what I stands for. Uh-huh. Uh, like every quarter, we do a like celebration, right? Uh, about people that have met their behavior goals. We track them with like a thing, an app or whatever. Mm. And uh, everybody who meets their goal we it's like based on percentages right so if you have like x percent i think it's like 85 or above uh behavior stuff then you get to go to this thing and if you're under you get to go to like a it's like a reteaching where they talk about the rules and all that stuff because there's those are the kids that have they got there's something that they're they just can't you know get over so uh they mm. talk about rule reinforcing expectations and all that stuff so we're getting ready to do that but at this third quarter we usually just do one at school right a lot of sometimes we take trips places like the one for fourth quarter we like go to the park and it's like all day and we just do park things so we have activities and stuff like that uh the first one we went to like the y we just swimming and all that stuff but this one's like at school. So you have to do like stuff. We have to come up with like an activity to do. Mm. Okay. So I'm trying to make sure I have a thing. Right. To do. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> For the afternoon to do. Cause it'll be basically all afternoon <clears throat> with the stuff. So we're going to do that thing that day. So I'm going to come up with something. Try to figure out. Kind of plan that, figure out what in the world I'm doing. Some sort of STEM thing, probably, because they really like that kind of stuff. So we will do something. I'm thinking about doing an egg drop again. And, and uh, do any old throw the egg out the window. And have it padded or have a parachute. Yeah, they have, to, they have to make it not break. Yeah. Uh-huh. So it's just going to be like, I'm going to gather things. It's a good it's mostly one. Mostly cardboard and the twelve thousand Walmart bags in my garage. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, you, what you need to do is that you need to go to like Walmart and get those really big, uh, like straw containers, like the the drink straws. Because we oh, did oh, we, oh. we did a STEM activity where we did like, you meant like, like bales of hay. I was like, no, that's like, what I was just, thinking. Just like, go, ding, ding, just ding, go ding, out ding. to your, one of your. The school's neighbors and just take their hey <laughs> no just like get like you a big could little go to the show barn and because we made like moon landers with eggs well that's what i was kind of thinking about i was gonna go to the right outside the cafeteria they just have a bin 
where the cooks uh, throw all the the boxes that the food comes in, and then we take it down to the recycle building. Or not not me, but like somebody wheels it down there. And I was just gonna go and raid that for like all the cardboard Ooh. and bring it up to the room and like cut it, you know, into smaller so they don't have like a box. That's cheating. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I was thinking about that, doing like some kind of lander context because they like talking about like the Mars landers. Yeah. Because they've done all kinds of weird stuff <clears throat> there. So I was trying to think what else I need. Probably just cardboard, plastic so we, bags, and a bunch of tape. I need to buy a bunch of duct tape. Mm-hmm. You, you know those little like plastic cups, like the itty bitty cups, like the ones that they used to give you for like Swish? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, I have a like, oh, I swish. Had, I had, yeah, right. <laughs> I have. I use those because I actually ha- still have my I moon could, lander. I could taste that. That's that was mean. That was uh, a sense <laughs> memory that I did not want to go back and revisit. So thank I, you. I I was shopping today and I saw some mouthwash and there's this pink slash purple stuff that I saw and I was like, Bleh! and this, yeah, poor, this you, poor lady down the aisle just like looked at me funny. I'm like. No, it's okay. I'm just having flashbacks. Just go on about yeah. your day. <laughs> Trauma from my childhood. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, but yeah, so we... That'd be a good meme. You can't taste images. Like yeah. me. Uh, just right. a picture of that cart. Oh, God. Oh. Anyway, Moonlander. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and so that's what... I, I just... You, we, we just use a lot of, like, straws, you know, for the kind of, like, the legs and shock absorbers. Yeah. Because I then would just just buy those big things of straw in bulk and then that's how we made like some of the stem bridges where i gave them a budget in like five straws aka oh, yeah. steel yes. was a uh, you know a certain amount of money and so a lot of my experiments that involved steam most likely involved uh straw or straws at some point in time so i am so sorry turtles there you go. <laughs> There's a lot of popsicle hair. sticks and toothpicks. The I last also, ones I did had like, like eight hundred thousand toothpicks. I also mm. have a, had a lot of popsicle sticks. Yeah. And this one, I figure, if I borrow the cardboard from the bin, we do the thing, and then I just go put it back in the bin when I'm yeah. done with it. Right. Ta-da. <laughs> it's easy. Nailed it. I had considered a budget though, like you were talking about. Uh, I don't know what that would look like currently. But I'm considering throwing that in there so that we don't, like, the first class doesn't just, like, burn through all the stuff and then be like, oh, wait, hold on. Sure. <laughs> so I haven't quite worked out what that looks like yet. But I do know that I need duct tape. Uh, that's what... <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> Duh. That's going to be important. <laughs> but we did it once a couple of years ago, and it was really good. So... I was going to bring it back. I asked the principal. I was like, hey, can I, do you mind if I throw eggs out my window again? And she was like, yeah, sure, go for it. I'm like, okay. Okay. Nailed it. All right. <laughs> it's the second story. It's on the back side. It's not the back. It's fine. Yeah. Just, uh, you, you should have them have uh, targets also. So I, I did also consider that get uh, one of the piece of cardboard and like just put a bullseye on it and yeah. then move it like, not directly under the window, you know, like out. So they kind of have to like lob it to kind of get it out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cause that would be, that would be another good thing to do. Make him try to, whoever gets closest, you know, be another way to see how it goes. So I think it'd be fun. I think I'm looking forward to it, but I have to sort of finalize my stuff and start. <clears throat> I think also what I'm probably going to do is just start now grabbing a bunch of boxes. And when the kids, the kids always ask me, like, what's that for? And I never tell them. <laughs> drives them drives them crazy. <laughs> like I'm so aloof with like everything. Like, what are we doing? I'm like, mm, you'll find out soon. Yeah. That's all I tell them. Don't worry about it. And they're like, they're like <laughs> Yeah. Where like, are you where are you concerned? Yeah. Or the my favorite, my least favorite thing to be asked is, what are we doing today? And I just always answer sitting in our desks and waiting for directions. <laughs> Just like same, every day. Same thing we do every day. Same thing we did yesterday. Try and take sitting, over the world. Sitting down, <laughs> sitting down waiting for directions. I should start answering that. Taking over the world. I should just say that. 
That's I'm stealing that. That's we what I'm saying. Tonight, now on. Ryan? Next week, I'm supposed to get a new student next Monday. She's gonna be so confused. So confused. <laughs> poor, poor child. That poor child. Same thing we I... do every night. <laughs> Try to take over the world. Hmm. I'm gonna say that. I think so. I'm stealing I think, that next I think week. you need that. Take over the world. Take over the world. Uh-huh. <laughs> I always just get these weird looks. Like what? They look at you and go, uh old and you go no they just yeah. look at me and go they don't ever say that they're just like why don't you tell us because it's more fun to not. this is isn't isn't this more fun aren't you having fun <laughs> <laughs> or like in science when we talk about like something it's gonna be like something super weird and i'm like but we'll talk more about that later and they're like but no oh, now I'm like, nope nope not yet <sighs> can't so stop. I, 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 will, I will admit whenever i first started and i was still trying to like develop like lesson plans there was there were some times where i didn't exactly know what we would be doing until like the morning of yeah and so kids would come in and they'd be like hey so what are we doing mr funkhauser and i'd be like uh uh you'll find out don't oh, worry know. it's a mystery <laughs> mostly as i had like no <laughs> idea it was a it was a learning period for all of us True. Like, like, what are we doing you'll find out because i don't know either I do that sometimes in in uh, history because like I like right now we're finishing up the thing and there's like three things that I want to do, but I don't really know in which order I want to do them. Mm. So I'm just kind of like, it's going to be one of these. I have them planned out. I just don't really. The sequence is like, mm, so yeah, uh, we're going with looking at Egyptian artwork first. That's number one, uh, we're doing that. So we can get a thing about like what's going on. It's just basically like, what is this? Like, what things do you see here? It's just like looking at pictures and then being like, so I put a bunch of pictures in like a Google slide show that I'm just going to share with them. So they have it and they can look at it on their iPads. And then like, just questions like, what do you like on this? Like, what do you see? What do you think is happening? What is, you know, stuff like that to kind of just kind of get a feel for what on earth is going on why are yeah. Egyptians so weird like, yeah <laughs> and then that's like the last thing and like my mind is i always have these problems at like after the end of these units like trying to transition to the next thing because i'm like finishing up thinking about egypt but my brain is not ready to move on to the next thing yet so i have to like start getting that ready but my brain is still stuck in egypt mode <laughs> so I, like, can't even fathom ancient greece right now i'm just like nah, 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 nah. but mummies and stuff and you know and so my brain is, it's, I'm having this difficult time of not being able to make the transition to the next thing. So, because <laughs> I'm still stuck here, like in this mode of like, oh yeah, we're talking about this and we're doing this, but I have to like switch and start getting ready for the next thing. So, yeah. Uh, that's my struggle currently. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. super exciting oh really oh that's airman what have you been up to uh yes so i was actually sick monday who knew Uh, i was like i wasn't like deathly sick but i'm pretty sure i caught the death um and so i was just kind of limited and was like yeah i'm i'm feeling kind of bled and so i actually got to work tuesday and i worked for a little bit didn't really have any cases was just doing some typing and then i got threatened by my coworkers that if i don't go home they'll beat me up and so i was like eh, i should probably go home yeah they don't want to share They're you like, know oh. um so wednesday we just had some like, had a lot of meetings uh met with the da you know did all that kind of stuff did some stuff with the tribe so I haven't really done a whole lot work-wise this week. Uh, last weekend, I was down in Oklahoma City and went to a baseball game with Shelby. Granted, it was an OU baseball game, so my skin was a little tingly. Uh, <laughs> for being, you know, a former uh, OS, OSU. Fine, it's in but, the past now. I mean, it was, it was, it's okay. It was a really nice stadium. It was a really fun game. Uh, then we were like, oh, you know what we should do? 
we should totally go to the science museum. And both of them were like, yeah, that'd be amazing. And so it's, it's a beautiful facility, but we didn't really get to see it because we walked in and there was just like a horde of children on like a Sunday. And both of us were like, Oh no, because it was all nice and quiet on the outside. And I was like, Oh, this is, this is super cool. And then once the doors parted and it was just a, you know, I, I can't describe the the horrible sound <laughs> of like just thousands of children just screaming. And both of us looked at each other and were like, oh, nope. And so we just walked over to the zoo, the Oklahoma City Zoo, which is oh. they, they share a parking lot. And so we we How walked handy. over. We walked over there and it was a little rainy. And I don't remember last last weekend being yeah just it, expert it, just like wonderful. It wasn't exactly uh, bueno, but there was maybe twelve people in the entire zoo. That there we go. And wow. so we just Win. we literally had the zoo to ourselves. It was amazing. Um, and so we get we kind of got into zoo mode. So I think we're going to go to the Tulsa Zoo tomorrow. Oh no, the great zoo tour 2020. Great, great <laughs> All the zoo zoos because we already we already went to the the aquarium so we already crossed that off the list and so we were oh, like no. oh let's go to the the other zoo oh wait what about the other other zoo is an other other zoo I yeah the Tulsa Zoo there's the oh. Oklahoma City Zoo and there's Tulsa Zoo and then there's like some sort of like lion safari zoo somewhere around here oh dear and there's like an alligator park I, I know what? right there's a what yeah. hmm? there's some there's something down in Oklahoma, uh, close to Oklahoma City that it's like it's something like Big Dave's you know oh no alligator that's, park or something and I was like yeah it sounds about right that sounds like the little there's some random zoo thing in um oh it's down I don't know somewhere in north of Arkansas when I took biology <laughs> in college they went, we went down there it was like it's like one of those like sketchy like like somebody's house zoo, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like one of those things. I don't yeah. know what it's called, uh, but we went there for the for like our bio class because we were talking about all this weird stuff. And he's like, "Yo, we're going down there." So we took the van, the college van down there, and it was like that. It was like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> somebody's house is right here, and then there's like, oh, here's a chimpanzee. You're like what? No. Uh, <laughs> and so here's a, a radium wolf for whatever. Yeah. No. So it, I, I have a feeling it's one of those because several weeks ago we actually went to Woolarock, which to if you've oh. never heard of Woolarock, which I have not, it it stands for get it's it's not it's not as cool as you think it stands for because Woolarock you're like oh that's some really cool like Native American thing no it stands for literally woods lakes rocks they just shortened it and so it's called the river rock <laughs> so um, it's just so, outside yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so frank, we were gonna call it outdoors but that didn't sound cool just, so just frank outside. so frank phillips whenever he came to the area and you know he got stupid rich he was like i want to build like a cabin like just randomly in the middle of the osage nation and just bought like a stupid amount of land because you know oil money rich and then he just pretty much just built like his own private museum with his own private like or family like cabin which is this giant monstrosity of a house uh for a quote-unquote summer home and then he was like i like animals but i don't really feel like hunting and so he just imported like zebras and tigers and there's a wild herd of buffalo that roams this property. And there's like elk and all sorts of things. And it's literally like his own private zoo. And then as he got older, it's like, oh, I'm actually going to open it up to the public. And so you go there and it's like an art museum, a history museum. And then it just has all of these things inside this massive building. But it's surrounded by pretty much like a legitimate zoological park. My question is, my first question is, um, how long until we're hearing about Oklahoma's feral zebra problem? Uh, well, it's not. It's nothing like <laughs> yeah. where they escaped um, yeah. Columbia's in the wild. 
uh, hippos. Wild not like hippos. That. Yeah, it's, true. it's nothing like that. Um, I, I I don't think there's I think there's a few zebras there, but it's <laughs> so the park itself is actually enclosed. I don't know how much acres, but it's to the several thousands. It's also right next to a federal land reserve where they have wild horses. Oh dear. And so this is just like that's a, a lot of fence to break. I'm yeah, just saying. But but also think of like think of your image of Oklahoma, like Great Plains, Prairies. Flat. Okay. That's mm-hmm. at, not Dust. really not really flat. Like this is actually in a valley where there's a legitimate lake and there's a rolling there's, hill. It's, it's Oklahoma Hills. Oklahoma yes. Hills. And so it's but literally hills. just like this compound that's just there and there's just whatever. And so it's it's a really unique place because I was like, she's like, oh, we should go to Wooler Rock. And I was like, huh? What, what is that? And so kind of imagine the Buffalo Bill Cody Museum. We went up to Montana. Oh, yeah. Just like a smidge smaller in the middle of Oklahoma. With that animals. place was enormous. I, wow. <laughs> and so, no, this place is, if you get bored, you should Google it because it's it's really it, it, it's really cool um because it's literally from me here in bartlesville it is 20 minutes away from me oh. and i had no idea it existed that's so weird no yeah it's and so that counts as a zoo slash museum kind of and so but yeah, we, i'm just imagining them going in concentric circles outwards like they're gonna be in like omaha and like <laughs> <laughs> somewhere in arkansas soon is on, uh, who, us? on their yeah on your zoo tour oh well our, yeah. our next trip when you swing is... by dickerson park zoo let us know well, hang well on. That, that's actually that's ne- actually next on the list <laughs> oh See? man because i was like helen susan on you because she'll be there she's like yep here i am hello <laughs> because the other cl- i'm not close zoo was the zoo up in independence kansas you remember going to Neil Walla? There's a zoo in Independence, Kansas. Yeah, it's literally it's not like a major like extravagant zoo, but it's a like a legitimate zoo zoo there in Independence, <clears throat> right on the uh across where that park was where we always camped out. Yes, there's there's a zoo over there, and I only remember going there once, is? and it was the one time it was open. Yeah, I did not Google remember it. that. Look it up. I mean, I I just don't remember. Yeah, so. my my memories of Independence, Kansas, are basically confined to that park slash football field stadium, mm-hmm. uh, and just uh, the tiniest bit of like the downtown area. Yeah, I only remember where the- I remember walking the parade route. Uh, the, that I I kind of blacked that out of for my memory, but I remember <laughs> I just remember like kind of what the buildings look like. They're that light color brick. Yeah, I, and kind of wide street area. That's all I remember. That's all I. It's very vague. Nothing concrete. The park a lot more so because we had to sit there for hours on end huh. and sit and then yeah, sit we... some more in the rain usually. Um, <laughs> it was always raining. It was one year. It was raining so bad. I remember the <coughs> that field was garbage, right? <laughs> and so yeah. mm-hmm. uh, the one year, I don't remember if it was my, maybe my, jun- my sophomore year maybe. Uh, sophomore, junior probably. The color guard did this thing where they like ran down. Uh, it was probably <gasps> sophomore year. I think it was sophomore year, and they were running. That field was mud, and a bunch of them just slipped oh. and like went sliding <laughs> forward, oh, no. like forward towards that front sideline. They just ate it. They were sliding through that mud, and they had like these white pant things or whatever. It was bad. Oh. <laughs> it was bad. I, yeah. Uh, but but yes, there there is a zoo. Uh huh. In in New, I I I I pretty much try to black out anything from Independence. I from Neowalla. It was a fun trip. I remember a train, and uh-huh. it was always usually really cold. And so there, yeah, there, a, there was a train. Yeah, there's a train, and we used to go down. Okay, so uh, this is a lot of inside baseball, but um, I'm, but let's back up just a moment. Neowalla is Halloween spelled backwards, and it is yeah. a marching band competition uh, festival in Independence, Kansas. And uh, well, so all, appar- all three of us were actually, in a uh, band, marching band. Well, and apparently that, that it's is important like, for the story. Like a legitimate, like, like city festival. Like it's not just a band. No, it is. But no, which, yeah, yeah, we I just, didn't, which I didn't know for, that. 
for our for our intents and purposes it uh for, it's a band festival i do remember Cheers. because one year i remember we got bored and we went a walking like uh like a do me and Corey and uh chad remember chad we went walking mm-hmm. Uh, very far away we bought some ice cream i think we would do that sometimes uh and we like yeah we went out and we went down that thing i can't remember which direction we left from because i really have no there's no clear orientation of cardinality in my brain about how that place is set up but we just no. went out walking down one of the main roads yeah i uh, just hanging out wandering around because <laughs> it was like hours between the parade and the oh yeah the show. oh yeah we just we just wandered around <laughs> wandered around town Dude, yeah, we uh, we'd go and I don't walk think we down. Were supposed to, I don't think we we're supposed to do that. No, you weren't. We would we'd go and walk around the river. Uh, There's a and, river? Oh, that's right. Oh yeah, the trails that go through the. Yeah, we spent a, I spent a lot of time on those. Yeah, those are cool. Yeah. So that's an interesting topic because uh, all three of us were in marching band. And yeah, cool, obviously, <laughs> and so, uh, Brand, you were the you were the first one, obviously, because you're the oldest. Uh, yeah, to, by I mean, default, I mean, mostly. just to, by default to get into marching band. Um, did you? What what made you stick through it all those years? <laughs> uh, it was fun, mostly. Like that was it. It was just fun. Yeah. And I was marginally good at it, yeah. so I was just like, okay, like I was just good at marching and so yep let's go let's do it <laughs> i really like it and you played you played the trumpet just so everybody yeah. knows <laughs> yeah oh yeah that's true that's yeah. important too yeah uh, but... it's all of the stereotypes about trumpet players are 100 percent true mm-hmm. play just... as loud as possible yes oh. it, that's true it, uh, arrogant. you want you uh... want you want to be the loudest <laughs> uh it's basically like if you are familiar with choir and like the sopranos that's basically mm-hmm. that's basically a trumpet players right mm-hmm. you're the center of attention you're the loud brash but yes it's very every time i tell like when i first um started working at school my coworker, one of them she was in band a bunch and she was like oh you're a band she's like what'd you play it's like trumpet and she goes mm, yep yep <laughs> <laughs> so yeah yep. it was uh, yeah it was just fun i just yeah. really enjoyed it a lot and that was kind of it, really, and it was mm-hmm. relatively like I liked it. It was just really mm-hmm. fun. Yeah, uh, the getting it to school at like six o'clock in the morning was not <laughs> fun, <laughs> but everything else was really good. Yeah, I like going on the trips. I like doing the marching and parades. I like the you know everything. It was good. I liked it a lot. Yeah, Mr. Shannon kept us really active, and and mar- and band at in Rogersville started in sixth grade and you could take it all the way through senior high school and it was every single day it wasn't oh, yeah. and, and i'm saying that just because like i know uh, i know no, people it, who who were in band who would they just went like twice a week or they whatever block they were in they would go to so that I, that's a that's a i think that's yeah. a key difference that an experience that we had that not everybody did have my sixth graders go three days a week yeah they go monday wednesday friday yeah but i think um after that seventh grade you can go every day Hmm. but in sixth grade it's because that's like fifth and sixth grade they start in fifth grade but that's like still elementary school kind of intro band thing so they go three days a week and then if you make it through that you can go to full days but Hmm. i actually liked it i took all the band classes like would you like to be in concert band yes would you like to be in jazz band absolutely give me a jazz band i love jazz band Mm -hmm. Uh, but i think marching band just because you got to go and do stuff right it was one of those it's like really the only thing i wanted to do in school like (laughs) Like, would you like to go on this trip? The, most of them weren't very far. Like, we're going to mm-hmm. go to Carthage. Like, well, I don't really care about Carthage, but I'm going to go do this. It was mm-hmm. always on Saturday. I don't care. I'm going to go do stuff. It was fun. I, was, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I like playing my trumpet really loud. Hey. <laughs> it, that's, that's true. That's kind of true. it. Yeah. I really enjoyed that part. Mm-hmm. Oh, and, a- <laughs> and Aaron, what about you? Uh, well, as a percussionist, it it was never our job to play loud. <laughs> we, right. we, we were, All we those were, stereotypes are true too, by the way. We were, the, we were the flutes of the band. We were the uh-huh. the gentle 
sway and no. muse uh, lies uh no yeah we i'm trying to think here so yeah i started i'm i don't really know what like got me into it because i did band and choir and athletics yeah but yeah you started in sixth grade but i started mark oh i was in the high school pit in seventh grade Oh, okay. And then I actually started marching, marching in eighth grade. I did too. We had a, that year, or whatever was small. And he was like, hey, eighth grade's going to march. And we were just like, no. okay. <laughs> I, I doing... Funny experience, but I, I, me too. He, those eighth graders were utilized quite extensively. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We were conscripted into the high school band. We did it. The trumpet line didn't need it because you want to talk, the, the players that were like ahead of me, like, oh my goodness. Those guys were good. Yeah. So we were just sort of there to fill the gap in the line. Not they're not to really provide any sonic help because uh, they had it under control. It was just fine. <laughs> but uh, it was really nice to get to like hang out with those guys because most of them were like super nice and they were just like teach you stuff about how to be a better trumpet player. And it was really, I really liked that, you know, yeah. uh, they were just like, oh yeah, you got to do this. And it was in that weird like band way of like, it was sort of, hidden in the guise of listen i don't want you to s- screw up my line so i'm gonna tell you this <laughs> right in the hey y- you have to do your job so that i look good yeah like yeah. we're not here to suck okay yeah this is what you gotta do I'm like okay got it but it was it was good they were still like helpful it wasn't like yeah what the heck are you doing you know what i mean so yeah and so for yeah, that was exactly the the way for me because i had you know guys like uh austin Devedito, Levi Hammond, um, Kyle uh, Reuter, uh Kyle Heimstra, Dustin Smith. So I, I had a lot of the those older guys because it was pretty much just me that stayed from transitioned from middle school to high school. I was pretty much the only because I when I graduated, I was the only senior uh, percussionist. Like there was no other <laughs> seniors. Uh, and I I liked it because it was it was unique it was fun, and then when I talk to people, especially here in the, you know or you know other schools, and I talk about like all the trips we went on, you know because we we went to uh, you know Cedar Rapids, Ohio, the year after I graduated, they went to Hawaii of all places. Uh, so we we actually you know we actually had a really cool band. And then I talked to people that I went to college with at NEO because I, I continued my quote unquote playing career in college as a snare drum at a Northeastern Oklahoma A&M where, you know, got these people that have, you know, never really marched before. And I was like, do you guys not know what a crap step? Is that, is that not something that no one knows? Is that, and so it was, it was kind of that, that really cool feeling of like, oh, you, you don't know how to read sheet music. Ah. Okay, let me teach you. Well, that, I mean, if you're a drummer that knows how to read sheet music, you are the minority. You yeah. are a god. Right, a, <laughs> uh, now, I, I will. <laughs> that is a definite. That is a. That, I, that's, I, a that's a superpower right I there. I will admit, most of the time, whenever we did stand tunes uh, for like football games or basketball games, us percussionists, we didn't have sheet music. It was just. Well, stand tunes like, are different. Like, I don't know what I'm talking about. But, like, and that was just like a cool feeling to be, you know, be a part of a, a college band. Yeah, we had maybe anywhere between forty to sixty people in the band, but I mean, we were all really good. Uh, not so much with some of the people that I shared the percussion line with, because like I remember I showed up and like, well, you're probably going to be the most experienced person here. They got two people that were homeschooled and never picked up an instrument before. And then three other people came, like, one person was a saxophonist, one person was a, a clarinet, and we stole a trumpet player. And I'm like, uh, I beg your pardon? Stole a trumpet <laughs> player. Yeah, and so I had to pretty much build a percussion line from scratch. Uh, and then, you know, when we, when we got to do, you know, winter drum line, like, that, oh, that was, that was the thing. And then I talked to people that, you know, come to, you know, from these really big schools here in Oklahoma. And they're like, yeah, we had like six kids in it. Like, no, man, we had like 12. It's like really cool. It was, that was a staple. Yeah. 
we did that. I like that too. Uh, I joined that not because I was a like the my the first year they did it was our junior year, and they had some people doing it. And then so senior year, a bunch of more of us were like, "Hey, I like band. Can I have more band? Let's join <laughs> drumline." And so they needed a bunch of like auxiliary percussionists to like fill out the stuff. So that's why I played timpanis because yeah. I could read the music. And then I played bongos on some song, and like my friend played the marimba, like because they just needed more pit to fill it out. And so yeah. there was some pushback. Some of the percussion, some of the other drummers were like, oh, yeah, you guys want to join because we did good. Like, no, we just want to do band stuff. Shut up. I just want to go on more it's, band trips. It's, like, it's, an, <laughs> it's an easy class. Like, what are, you, what are you talking about? We didn't have a... That wasn't a class. That was like an after-school thing. Yeah. But... We actually, we actually had it as a legitimate class in, in, when I was in high school. Like, I just did. I said we said band and jazz band, and there was some sort of music appreciation class, but I could never take that because I always had to do other things. But and I mean, that's kind of the same thing with with choir, mostly because it was super easy, but it was actually no a lot of fun. You know, you don't really because you know again we also went on some really cool trips. We got to go. To yeah, New you York, did. Yeah, weirdly, like we got to go sing up in Carnegie Hall. We got to. You know, we got to do things like that, and it was just it was just fun. It was just kind of something unique. And then you know, I kind of it's it's a little disheartening now because you know a lot of schools are closing down their you know arts stuff. And you know, when I when I was teaching at Caney Valley, they maybe had you know six people in the band, and that was including the band instructor. Oh yeah. And so it, it was kind of heartbreaking to see well, it's, bands it's hard. at a lot of places diminish. It's hard at small schools, though, because, you know, you got, like, only a limited pool of people and, yeah. like, 800 clubs. So it's hard to get people to end that, to do that multiple stuff, you know. Well, and it's costly. Well, yeah, yeah I mean, you know, that, but... that trumpet is not cheap, right? Like, I'm... <laughs> mm-hmm. I still... Uh, yeah, it's not a that's not a small investment, so yeah. that's a problem too. Like brass instruments in particular are like stupid expensive. Yeah. So, so if you're if you're a small band, you're like, yeah, but we need a new tuba. <laughs> well, just good luck with that. Luck. Who's, <laughs> who's mortgaging their house? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That that was that was a big thing at NEO was seeing like a lot of the old tubas. And the other equipment like that, and they're like, "Well, this, you know, marimba is from you know 1956, and you know, this, vintage, oh, this marimba. This yeah. this tuba here was gifted when like Inio first opened, and they're like, uh, oh, what? That's cool. I don't remember there being a lot of random instruments sitting around at Crowder. Yeah, because <laughs> I also played uh, in college. Well, I played in the jazz band, just in college, like the jazz slash pet band." So we had, we like played legitimate jazz songs and then uh, we played pep stuff at the basketball games and it was a real small group. There was only, well, there was two jazz bands. There was a full jazz orchestra, which I say orchestra, but like a full jazz set with like four trumpet players and like three trombone players and like four or five sax players, you know, and a guitar and a bass and a drum, like a big, you know, big band type thing. And then there was a jazz quintet. I think it was five of us. It was me and a sax player. So it was just one trumpet player, a guy that played tenor sax, who was like amazing. Like, oh my gosh. And he went, oh, wow. Yeah, he was a great saxophone player. We had a bass player. Yeah, there was a guitar player and a drummer. It's kind of it. There might have been another saxophone player sometimes, or a trombone player. That was it. Small, real small ensemble. So that was real fun, uh, because we would also like go play out randomly. Like we would just go out, yeah, and play at like a hotel or like a. We played a couple weddings. Really, <laughs> that was <laughs> <laughs> that was weird, but it was really fun. We just like play at a wedding. I distinctly distinctly remember this. I had this uh, memory of <clears throat> it was like an outside wedding in spring. And it was like mega dark. And then we're in this pavilion. <coughs> and we couldn't see our charts. 
and all. And so we had to like take, we like borrowed the Christmas lights they had strung up on the wall and draped them across the music stands so that we could like just see the key changes on our charts. Like, what? Where are we? Okay, right here. Let's go. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> we at the bridge part. Okay, there it is. That was really funny though. <laughs> we, we did a, I can't. It was one of the guys at NEO. Like, we started a barbershop quartet. Oh yeah, I forgot. And about so, that. yeah, we like it was just something where, I like, we, we we all were in the same dorm. And so sometimes you get like a message, be like, oh, I can't sleep. I remember going out and singing you know, random things at like 3 a.m. in the parking lot, you know, on like a weekend or something. But yeah, we, we sang at uh, some fundraisers. We sang at like the president of the, of the college's birthday, uh, some alumni events. We sang the national anthem a few times. And that was really cool. That is cool. And we got to we got to go to Tulsa, where apparently I did not know this. Uh, Tulsa was the original location of the first barbershop quartet. I, really? Or, yeah, I I, I, yeah, I have to confirm that because I remember that was told to me. I was like, the what? The huh? Sure, that wasn't just uh, some Tulsa taking credit for something. Like, no, 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 for real. This this is it. I promise. <laughs> But, like, wait a minute. Are you sure it wasn't like <laughs> not to, <laughs> Chicago or Baltimore? No, 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 Tulsa. Right. Well, Let's okay. See. Let's see. Yeah, <laughs> so we we got to do stuff like that, but it it was just always little things. And plus, we had a really cool like arts program at NEO because I remember because I let's be honest, I wasn't the best athletically, and so I was like, how am I gonna? go to college oh. i was like music and yeah that's how i went to crowder it was kind of an accident right yeah. like they were uh me and my friend were looking for places to go and we were looking at crowder and we saw they had a band and we called them up and she's like hey yeah you can come audition next week I'm like uh <laughs> well, all right <laughs> so we went yeah. down there i played like three songs she's like here sight read this i was like i played some random song and she's like all right, you're in. I was like, whoa, what? <laughs> okay. That, that was that was exactly <laughs> kind of what happened at NEO because I was I remember I went out with, went down with the dad and it was just miserable. It was cold. If you ever been to Miami, Oklahoma, there's a mushroom farm that smells. <laughs> and I was I was like, oh, this is this is college. Oh well, all right. And I remember like we talked to the football coach. I was like, yeah, we talked to the baseball coach. I was like, nah, I'm not going to be able to do that either. And then I was like, oh, I was, I told our little campus tour lady. I was like, hey, I actually did band and choir. Can I think about that? And she's like, oh my gosh, let me meet you with mama. And I'm like, uh, who? And uh, Mary Susan <laughs> Whaley. That does sound every, ominous. When you every, that everyone, way. everyone called her uh, Mama Sue or Mama Whaley, um, who she's, you know, still, a huge inspiration and you know to my education career was she she came out at after this huge theater and she's like you know like super supportive and i i sang to her i don't really do well with solos but she's like you're a phenomenal bass and then she's like well, i hear you do band and i was like well yeah i played band but the lady said that the band teacher is uh is busy and she's like well, he's not going to be in a moment. And so she called him and he came out and he's like, well, I was in a meeting, but I was told I needed to come speak with you. And I'm like, I am so sorry. Yeah, <laughs> it was her idea, not mine. And I was like, I don't, I don't know what's going on. And, and he's, and he's like, yeah, she kind of runs the campus. So I don't really have, I can't really argue. I'm like, well, I drum. So <laughs> like I, I hit things with sticks. Good. Is that, is that something you need? Huh? <laughs> you uh, like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I play good, and so um, I went and I, I, went and I literally uh, took like a snare drum up to his office, and I think Dad was sitting over there, and I just played some random beats, and he's like, "Oh, good, all right." So I'm offering you a scholarship. I was like, "Oh, this is how college works, okay." And so then Mary Susan offered me a scholarship, and that's kind of how I continued on and then like we had band camp 
you know, uh, earlier when the, the semester started. And then that's when I found out that I had, you know, you know, two homeschool kids, uh, three people that never played percussion before. And then a, a, a girl that was a part of the flags or the color guard. And I was like, Oh, uh, I don't know if I like college now, but it was actually a lot of fun <laughs> just because it was a, it was an interesting dynamic. <laughs> We were actually really good. Uh, we got to play, you know, at all these sporting events and things like that. So it, it was just, it was just something that I can look back on. And sometimes, still, if I'm like driving, I get a song stuck in my head that we played like years ago, and I'll be like, oh, I remember that song. I whistled jazz songs to myself all the time. I, I still play Free Ride. <laughs> like, oh yeah, there we go. Like a bunch of those jazz, like the pet band songs, and then like a bunch of jazz standard songs that he's play all the time. I, I whistle them constantly, <laughs> all the time. I I can still play songs that we played in high school, like the drum part. I don't really care about well, house, but yeah, but I mean, but yeah, I, I, I didn't still... expect you to like bust out the clarinet part or the flute part. That'd be weird. Uh, like, <laughs> but I, I, can't... I, I can't. The only music I can read as a drummer is <laughs> the piccolo. Don't worry, guys. I got yeah, this. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> But yeah, I just uh, just a, a, an interesting thing like that that I have on my resume, and people ask me, and I'm like, yeah, I, you know, I did band, and they're like, oh, oh, you did band, like I I did band. <coughs> yeah, the the people that I the guys I played like guitar and stuff with, they found out about that, and they're like, you should bring your trumpet. That's always a weird experience. <laughs> they don't really. There, I've done it before. I played my trumpet last month, right? Like I busted it out. Mm-hmm. And I was playing over there, but uh, it's weird because they don't really know how to play with a horn player, and so like <laughs> just like, a weird mariachi band that's going. Well, yeah, they don't really get out like, of their hey. way. <laughs> well, yeah, they're like, hey, let's do something jazzy. And I'm like, uh, do you know how to play jazz? And they're like, no. I'm like, oh, oh boy, okay. Here we go. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Well, it was it was funny because like, do you know what two five one means? Like, not really. Like, okay, well, just play something <laughs> in a key that I can handle, and I'll just play along with you. It'd be fine. <laughs> Here's gonna learn about syncopation. Really just quick. vamp. Just vamp. It'd be good. <laughs> Cause, uh, Cause Shelby came up like a few weeks ago, and she's like, "Oh yeah, you remember you, you told me that you were a drummer in high school and college," and it's like, I, "I learned." I was like, "I would love to see you drum," and I was like, "Uh." Yeah, I haven't picked a pair of drumsticks in forever. I highly doubt I have drumsticks now. And I literally walked in my closet and I picked, I lift up a box and there's a pair of drumsticks. I was like, how did I get them? Listen, I, you have to because I have drumsticks in my closet. Like, so <laughs> I don't, I, you've got to. I don't even know. Yeah, they're, they're sitting on my, my desk because I, I pick them up and just I was, pair I, was, away. I, I was, I was sitting there doing double, double strokes with them. Hey, there you go. And I was like, "Oh my gosh, it's the the sh- it's coming back to me." Right. Yeah, is, I, uh, every once in a while in the fall, I do like, I'm like, I need to hear snare drum right now. <laughs> I have to hear. I can't. I have. I could YouTube marching bands because like I need snare drum. I need mm-hmm. it. Well, okay. For, okay, for me, for me, what always was my favorite part is whenever the. <laughs> Uh, the larger marching bands would come out, and they'd have like fourteen tubas, and they they they'd hit. Well, that's the, how you know. <laughs> that's how they you know. That's how you. For those of you who aren't in the the marching band world, you know it's going to be it's a big band whenever they have fourteen plus tubas on the field, and you can just sit back and bask in the bass glory. You have to count. Yeah, you do two things. You count the tubas and the bass drums and the bass yeah. there you go <laughs> yeah. that's a band because I, yes. when you hear the walking bass drum I yes love that so I when love that. one of my things that i love to do is like i'll get on youtube and the dci warm-ups oh good gravy yeah. those are <laughs> so much fun and i remember i, I love used those I used a video in one of my presentations I did in college. Uh, I can't remember what the purpose was, but I was like, here's a DCI band warming up. This will, I'll explain this all in a second. I can't remember why, but yeah, like. But importantly, the DCI drum line uh, is amazing. 
That's yeah. why. <laughs> that was that was always fun, and that's that's something I'll still just be like, you know what I'm in the mood for? Bands, and I'll be like, you know, the cadets or you know, or somebody that I just like have to listen to. I did. There's something about that marching snare drum. That sound is just yeah. Like, the snare. Yeah. Oh yes, like just that. That it's such a I don't know. There's such a distinct, let's like crack noise. It like, is, yeah, that, that thing. I love it. I love that sound. Yeah, there, there. It's is. one of those sounds that's like addicting, right? <laughs> I don't know if you guys have this problem, but there's certain sounds that I'm just like I need that. I like get addicted to that like certain sound, uh-huh. and that marching drum snare is one of them on the list. It's like oh, C- yes. cadence, cadences during like a parade were the funnest things in the world to me. Oh, I love that. There's uh-huh. there's a video that's I would on, get bored and be like, no, let me play loud. Come on, my turn. That's, my turn. <laughs> that's on Let so me play this, that A or B flat just like super high up there. Give me that one. Just piercing trumpet there, noise. But there's a video that someone has of so when I was at NEO, uh, we we had this cadence that we used in Rogersville and the band instructor, uh, Mr. Compton, came up and he's like, I want something for our stand tunes. Make me something. And looked at me. And so I used that cadence and it's just something that we would just say during football games. And they're still using it uh, how long was that? Eight years later? Because they, they sent me a video and they're like, Aaron, this is still your cadence. And I was like, <gasps> My heart swells with joy. <laughs> but I, I will say there is a different dynamic when you switch from uh, the, the, the marching band to concert band. Well, yeah. Uh, as as a percussionist, now you have to play quiet. I you have to remember, what, you have to remember I, what pianissimo means. I, yeah, I have to go. With, what's the what, this, Mr. What, what Shannon? There's there's no there, there's a lot of rests here, Mr. Shannon. Is yeah, yeah, like, we have to like play, can we play those? Why is the why does this not say? Fortissimo. Fortissimo. I don't what are, what is, is this? Is P P P P? I what? I, <laughs> There's oh. no rim shot. Is there? Can I make a rim shot here? Uh. I, I thought all mu- I thought all drum music just said F at the bottom. I don't know. Yeah, and then that. they're like, it's just hey, the implied three Fortissimo. <laughs> they're like, hey, you can play the uh, the. What's chime, a crescendo? You? And you're like, <laughs> the chi- I can, can I hit it with a stick? I'm like, you get a mallet. Uh, I mm, I still to this what? day have a lot of difficulty with um the marimba and the uh whatever the large scale bells are those will oh, always yeah, be the uh, enemy what are those called i know what you're talking about but I, the tubular I can... bells the big tall ones no they're the because there's marimba and what's the other one? Oh, the, the vibraphone yeah, yeah, the vibraphone. So I, I thought you were talking about like the tubular bells, like the uh, the vertically tall ones. Yeah, oh, no, no, I, those like... are, I thought those were just those were just chimes. No, so I can, but there's. I remember a lot of times there was a, there was several songs that we played that had like little to no percussion, and so, but the, I mean, like you know, there's it, it was always a fight with the other percussionists. <laughs> With like, oh, does this song have a bass drum and a snare? Yeah. Hey, we could play those. Yeah, but who got to play the bass? <laughs> Mr. Shannon would look over at you and be like, "I, I need someone on the timpani. I need something on the, <laughs> someone on the bells. I need someone on the triangle. I need something on the cymbal." No. And you're just like, "But, but there's a snare drum right there. Can I play that too?" Well, that's <laughs> because we had to let Colin have a turn to be heard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, that's why. <laughs> oh, that's my. why. That's why. Go ahead and jump no, in, Colin. No, me. yeah, you've been, uh, you've been well, silent I mean, here. I mean, let's say, I mean, well, so, uh, so I played. I was part of the uh, the wind instruments, the best instruments. It sat in the front row, uh, so that everyone could uh, see how not hard we you. had to play. No, nope, <laughs> how how hard it was. We had so many holes to cover. Uh, it was very hard, uh, very difficult. Uh, I played the clarinet and uh, played the clarinet in marching band in. Uh, and a concert band, and then Barry Sachs in a jazz band. And yeah, if you played I'm not hit too, didn't you? I, I forgot you played Barry Sachs. Yeah, and then I, yeah, you're right. And then uh, for uh, musicals, I did play in the pit. Yeah. Um, 
which was, that was a that was a totally different experience. But I'm not a competitive person, except when I think back to marching band years, and I realized I was a very competitive person. I that was something that I really was invested in as far as getting that score back from the judges and learning about what that was and being devastated when it was lower than I thought it would be. And the highs of whenever it, you know, the whole thing pulled off and being able to be, for me, it was like, you guys touched on that as having mentors, there were older people who helped you become better. And then being part of that community of we are doing a thing we are working together and and yeah being frustrated when somebody messed up when the trumpets played too loud or never, when never. the the percussion got off beat from the rest of everybody else how dare you. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> kidding. uh and, and and yes all of the uh all of the uh the the, the thoughts and preconceived ideas and Things of woodwinds is definitely, uh, definitely true. We are delicate little flowers who uh, <laughs> stomp little our Colin, feet when we don't get little, our way. That's why we, away. That's why we had to be quiet in concert band, Aaron, because yeah. the woodwinds had to be heard. Because in marching band, you can't hear them it's, at all. As you much can fun just as hear brass and drums. That's it. <laughs> uh, it was it was funny because our college instructor, uh, Mr. Compton. He was like, I would really love to make this band more of like a DCI band because they don't have woodwinds <laughs> in. But yeah. I, with, with Colin, you know, I was never a competitive person. Like, yeah, I played football, but I was just kind of doing it. And I, I mostly did it for fun. And I was I was decent at it. I was smart. Uh, but in band, I wanted to get a better score than, than Maryville. Bran- no, than Branson. Or Steve. Willard. I, you never get a better score than Willard's losers. I know. Uh, I know. I, no smiling, no fun having Willard. I had, to, <laughs> I had to be Branson. Now, I will also admit that when I was a senior, I may have told uh, the younger underclassmen, uh, hey, if you hit a judge while we're marching, I'll buy you a Gatorade. Because they, I, I just remember always marching, and there's this. Our color guard used to do that. They, those field judges would be paying attention. Yeah. And I oh remember, gosh! I remember listening to some of those recordings where they'd be like, "And now I see. Oh, oh, oh my, that was my fault. That was my yeah. fault. I wasn't yeah. looking. Like, he was like, <laughs> in the head with the flag. Oh my god! But it, that was also a, a very not the hitting part, but that was a sense of of pride for me when I was a senior because, you know. As a percussionist, we were we had to have a different look. We had to be different. And whenever we were in parade form or you know, whenever we were performing in front of like Branson, uh, you know, we had to look and be better than them. And so that was that that was big for me. Whenever I'd look over the scores and I'd ask, you know, Mr. Shannon, Mr. Shannon, how did we do score wise? And you know who I'm talking about. And he'd be like, well, visually, you guys did better. And I'm like, my heart would swell. But the Carthage pride. judges always <laughs> give you a 72. No matter how good you do, Carthage judges, who I know are totally not listening, Carthage right. judges. <laughs> <laughs> you know who you are. I don't know. I never really, I don't know. I don't think I had the same, like, I'm just not a competitive person, like, full stop. It was more about, like, I don't really care what the judge thing said. I just wanted to know that we did good. Like, yeah. I just wanted to like, I wanted like a and, visual marks. Like, and, why like horn line were you, what do you not know what a diagonal is? Come on. There's a distinct difference between diagonal and curve. And what you were doing was a curve. Get in line now. <laughs> like, I don't really, it was like a self like perfectionist thing. I don't really care well, really and, what the judge, like whatever the score yeah. came I was like, is that good? I don't know what that means. <laughs> and, like, and it definitely scratched that itch too of that kind of personal perfectionism of a desire to do a thing and do it really well. Especially yeah. whenever I, I did feel like I was good for at it. me because like that's not, it's not generally how I live my life. So right. it's like an outside. <laughs> thing like I don't, <laughs> like I don't, it's a weird exception of like how i generally am like in life is just like 
that was like, no, I need to do this like perfectly. Everything mm-hmm. else, I'm just like, meh. That, that, that's kind of how I am now. But I remember drill downs. Like, oh, I was always either, in there. I, I was in either there. Either oh, I had good. to win or it had to be another percussionist. Because I was like, oh, I'm not going to let, uh, uh, like, I'm not going to let a, a flute player beat me. Are you kidding me? No, flute players yeah. would never beat you if we're that's just being perfectly honest. I mean, that's- <laughs> so, like, that, that competitiveness, like, left whenever I got the NEO, but I, we, I still had to have that look of we are percussionists. We are different for a reason. We're a different species. And so, like, we 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 never we never did competitions, but we would go to high school events, and uh, I remember we went to a uh, a high school comp- a competition, and that was it, it brought me back to you know, we have to look and be better than these high school kids, and this is when I still had like the three homeschool kids that never been to a competition before, and I was like, eh, this will buff out, it'll be fine. And so I, that nature, I was always pretty competitive of, you know, we had to look different. We had to act different. We had to be different. And I, there's the immortal words, which I will, that, that will constantly be, if I can make it a ringtone, I would of just someone yelling, God, oh, was it guide left or guide right? Guide right. Gu- or a guide down. We use that one a lot. Oh, of, I, we use guide right. Guide right. I yelled at my horn line so much. Yeah. No. I, I, what? I, I remember that just ringing. And then, I'm pretty sure that's all anybody that was in a band of high school uh, with me would be able to tell you. They could. They would say like, "Man, he yelled a lot." As like, <laughs> as I talked to other people who were in band in high school with you, yes, that is all they. So actually they probably remember. thought I hated them. <laughs> they go, they, "Well, it's usually um, Brandon yelled a lot, and I'm pretty sure he hated me." And I go. No, he didn't hate you. Uh, that's no, just only when you were out of line. <laughs> if Which you were in line, you were amazing. I loved you. But <laughs> if you were out of line, I hated you so much. Because <laughs> yeah. I definitely remember, like, I remember having some moments with some, like, underclassmen people, like, whenever I was, like, older. Like, yeah, you are doing, like, a ama- like, you know, we had some, like, good, like, heart-to-heart moments. I don't know if anybody else remembers that. They probably just remember me shouting, like, super loud like <laughs> get over there like no. just yelling at them because they were in the wrong spot yeah uh, i i will also definitely say I, now i did not yell the first time uh, oh yes there was a grace it period it wasn't the first time it was the 25th time you were not in your right spot i started yelling a little bit <laughs> but I, I i will say yeah with when i was a senior because i even when i was like a fresh even when i was in eighth grade marching i it was that epitome that I had to be perfect marcher and not be that guy of the band. And so. Yeah. Cause uh, some crazy trumpet six, I used to yell at the clarinets and be out of line. Like, what are you doing? That's not where you're supposed to be. We were too busy being very special. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> there was just a couple in particular that I'm thinking of that they would be, I would look down the lines <sighs> and I would see one, like two feet in front of everybody else and be like, what? Stewart. I would just scream at them as I would yell by. I wasn't. But I, I'm I gonna will, say names. I'm being nice. Oh yeah, I'll bleep, I'll bleep those out. Sorry, sorry. I'm gonna, every every time I every time I, I would I will just take this book. time and and apologize to Kevin and Kyle. Sorry. Guys. <laughs> <laughs> every time I open up one of those yearbooks, I can I look at them. I'm like you. <laughs> Are you out of line? Uh, but I, I I will also say that I was in probably one of the best shapes of my life because of band uh it it takes a very unique is a word individual that can march that can crab step to a extremely high count going from the let's say the 20 all the way over to the 10 yard line across the field and you had to be there in uh let's say 16 counts of just of just booking it you should do it while playing a trumpet. Oh no, we we would also <laughs> yeah, and not being able to breathe. breathe. <laughs> yeah, you should do it without breathing. Do it holding That's your a, breath. <laughs> yeah, you're only breathing out. <laughs> but I I I just definitely remember, like, I, I I don't know how I remember this, but it was definitely the Titanic song we did. Titanic song. 
and it was after the my heart will go on and then it was back into because mr shannon liked to do the the get your attention song a really slow song and then finish with a bang song yes that's accurate that's that's and every single one, year 100 percent. and so i remember doing my heart will go on and then i can't remember what the other song was but we you know percussionists we just like we didn't play that entire song and so i remember we were dead quiet and at a dead stop and then we had to go from like the 15 yard line like in this huge arc clear across to the the 20 yeah don't be getting out of line or the other 15 but but i remember one one time this this poor girl her name was melissa she she couldn't keep up and so she tripped like halfway there and we had to go back and make like a big splendor like it was part of the show to like get her up because she like hit hard and we're like uh uh oh we're dancing with the music improvise improvise <laughs> and then we had to like lift her up and like carry her the rest of the way oh no uh no it was like i just remember i saw her and then she was gone i was like <gasps> oh no Melissa, i'll never let go and then yeah. gone <laughs> and then it was uh well, this happened in college. It, we tried to do at least like two different, two or three shows a football season. And so we were constantly practicing. It wasn't like one show for the whole well, yeah. season like yeah. we did in high school, but this yeah. was, we did three shows, but they're all usually pretty simplistic like formations uh, that we did. And but the percussion always had to, had to move. But I just remember Stan Tunes, uh, the, the song Holiday by green day will never be the same because normally the tempo is no you play everything like hey, hyper speed but yeah That's what we was, used to do in pet band and, and like, remember, we're gonna take this song but play it more i, I remember mr faster. compton like looking at us and i remember seeing him snap and then he's like this is a good tempo right one two three and like ah, ah. and so i i had great forearms when i was in high school and college because of those audacious and so every time i hear holiday on the radio i'm like no, they're not they're not playing it right they're, not, they're it's they're too slow yeah because it's not be. like that's what the like in jazz band you had to play it faster it's, mm-hmm. it automatically becomes peppier when it's faster <laughs> yeah <laughs> eh, oh it, we we definitely put the pep in it during during stand tunes like everything we played was just hyper speed yeah um uh, but it, it was just a very interesting, unique time, mm-hmm. and it was it was a blast to be a part of. We never really got the answer for Colin of why. Oh did yeah, Colin, we, we kept... why did Colin join band? We got Aaron oh. and me. But we forgot <laughs> Colin. We just well, went off on this warp speed. Sure. Well, I I will say like percussionists and brass players tend to do. Yeah. <laughs> Listen to me. I'm important. <laughs> my, my... <laughs> Mostly yes. No. Right. Follow the bass drum. Yeah. Well, I'll follow him as soon as he does the right tempo. I would um, never. So <laughs> more. Yeah. That's what. More. <laughs> no. Oh, I'm sorry. You guys aren't playing the right tempo because I'm playing it. Continue. No. Yeah. <laughs> when, 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 yeah. If you follow. Yeah. Anyway. Uh. Well, I will say that having the exposure of band, uh, seeing Brandon, seeing you go through it. It was definitely an interest. And then what was really cool about Rogersville is in sixth sixth grade, you did both choir and band. And just as a... a that was brief, not cool because I had to do choir. Well, <laughs> so yes, I will say that you... Yes, but at least it was like, you know, everybody's going to do it, right? That's it was true. A, like, so, so just to give somebody a taste of either of those, whether you pursue them in the future or not, it was like, you I at didn't. least are going to have music in your life for one and then I want year. choir in my life. <laughs> and then you run screaming from choir off yes. key, obviously. Yes. yes. And, right. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it is just, I just, I really started to eat that up of, of, okay, I, I can do this. And I never thought of myself as musically talented or whatever, but just being exposed to that I and, and being able to be a part of something that was much bigger than yourself. I know that sounds very cliche, but when you're in the band room and you have a line of notes in front of you, but as you're playing, you hear other lines of notes being played around you to, and to hear all that put together 
really hit me like I never had felt something like that before. It was it's very special um, to, to me. And it, I, I always loved when all cylinders were firing in the band room and you, you, you were able to make it through a whole piece without Mr. Shannon shutting you down and saying, no, try again. That was terrible. Um, <laughs> um, so I just, I just really liked being a part of that, that thing. Um, and being able to have pride in it and going, okay, this is something I can do well. And um, I love the way this sounds and it was challenging. It was one of those things with on that graph of things that you're good at versus how hard it is. Like I felt like I was good at it and it was hard. So I enjoyed showing up and I enjoyed. Yeah, I feel like I, that was kind of me where I was at too. Is like, I, w- I felt like now I might be misinterpreting this. I felt like I was good. Yeah. And it was challenged too, right? So mm-hmm. like some people might have a different interpretation of uh my skill, but like I thought I was pretty good. And so I I had the same kind of like, yeah, I'm good. And the work I could see it and it's I could tell that it's doing so I like it, right? That's what Yeah. It, it and so it 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 made it while yes, it was hard, it was easy to show up and try. And I remember trying to go to to state and practicing those solos and just it being one of the worst times of my high school time of just how hard that was for me and how challenging it was, but going, there was just no other option in my mind of like, no, I'm just, this is something I'm going to practice that I'm going to really work on and seeing it pay off at the end. And then seeing that, and then, you know, just stretching myself a lot to do the, the pit band for musicals. Um, and, and, and jazz band and all of these little things that it wasn't just a an extracurricular activity at that point it was i mean it was one of the reasons that i was excited to go to school is that was like, the it, reason i wanted was, to go to school like, that was that's why i was like oh man here we right. go yeah you got you started first the thing day. in the morning let's go yeah. get yeah. it yeah. exactly and you know, I'll just, I, I know I'll never, you know, we'll never forget those memories or, you know, a lot of the, the lessons that, you know, I took from that, from Mr. Shannon. Or the, the way th- that instrument room smelled. Yeah. Yeah. Of, yeah. It was terrible of like the spit and the oil. Like, no, I like know. that. there's another sense memory. <laughs> that would, that always grossed me out when I would see you guys turn around and release your valve it has to go somewhere it does yeah and you know like i was saying like those life lessons of something i still say multiple if, times a day of if, if you're, you're on time, on time, you're, time late. you're late yeah i said that this morning <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I tell that to i've told that to hourlies that i've hired i've told that to students that you know like it's just so what a simple phrase and changes how you operate in the world yeah. and and that was a as you said a 6 a.m marching band practice in the morning yep. no if you're like so much is tied into that and it came from band you know yeah. as just i i just that's why i have i have such love for that and such joy whenever other people are involved in, in reminiscing about it of i don't think of myself again as a somebody who has a lot of like school pride uh you know all the the, you know i went to college and graduate school and i could have cared less how those people performed but ah man marching band yeah sure i'll I'll have pride (laughs) for that all day long (laughs) and that and i loved doing that whenever i was the um uh the drum major for two years of that was that was something that i i took immense pride and stressed over and um being able to be yeah whatever a representative was for the band at that point in time yeah. you know like cuz you're just up there flapping your arms for a while uh, <laughs> the, the band really doesn't need you in the grand scheme of things uh except oh, yeah. if they're really spread apart yeah um, you just got to start that's all we need yeah you just got to start and then start me. <laughs> and then to, <laughs> to know of like again that yeah I, I didn't contribute to any of the sound coming off of the field. And so, yeah, those guys did that. And we get to stand up and accept the award for them. But knowing like, yeah, I, the, they're, they're the ones and we help help to show them off to, yeah. to the crowd and that kind of stuff to, to be that, be in that position. Um, 
was all, again just a whole whole experience yeah there's also some good uh lessons to be learned in that environment because there was definitely some people that i that were in my line or that were trumpet players with me that i hated right like, i hate it I, I, mm, no <laughs> did not like them we did not get along at all but or just in the band in general, there was some people that was just like, no, I can't even with you. Like, mm-hmm. I can't, like, I can't, I don't want to talk to you, but I've got to figure out how to work with you because I care about this band and that stuff is not important. I just want to play. We've got to figure out how to, we can work together and play this song. That's it. Like, yep. I don't want to like speak with you, but we've got to work together and do this marching because <laughs> oh. I care about that more than I care about hating you. Right. Oh, That's yeah. more, but so that kind of, like trying to figure it work in that environment mm-hmm. so those lessons of like how to get around those things and work with people when you have like like big personality differences and oh yeah you just don't like them and but you've got to work with them anyway there's no choice right mm-hmm. you've got to do it and, cause... and yeah and at the time you're not really thinking at that level you're just thinking like ugh you know, it's one of those questions of, of yeah, you're uh, 17 you get, years old. And you're like, I hate you. Like, I that's hate all you. you. Right, right. Yeah. I hate you. Um, but we've got to get this done. And when you flash forward to job interviews of when they say, yeah. explain it, you know, explain a scenario where you had to work with somebody you hated, you might not immediately go back to those experiences in band or band camp or whatever, but they are there. And I, I mean, I have those memories of people who like we were actively tearing each other down outside of band but it was one of those things of like nope when we're here it's a truce or maybe oh, it's still active but yeah, it's still active just... i almost got in a fist fight in jazz band yeah like, so I was like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> but having that that being able to have the understanding of the one thing that we both can agree on is that this other thing is important to us yeah so we can get we can work on that I yeah. still hate you. I still don't like you, and I still yeah. want to push you in front of a bus. But that's true. <laughs> but again, <laughs> in this. my situation, it's you got to think two trumpet players sometimes try to work it, and I am not like, like I'm like the stereotypical, like very brash, very loud, very like opinionated person. And so when the two of those people are occupying the same space, very difficult <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> right. And now, like this is something that I like when I was like 17. Right. I didn't really think about it in that terms, but right. now you've kind of had time to go. Okay. I know that I have some issues here. Uh, I know that my personality is, can get in the way uh, of something. <laughs> <laughs> Physically rain it in sometimes, you know, uh-huh. <laughs> it's a little, yeah, they can be to get you in trouble. Sometimes I'm aware of this now. Uh, mm-hmm. when you're 17 you're still trying to figure out how to be a person too so you kind of are like yeah and you're, you're struggling with that and you do but in that environment where there's that creative things happening and you're working together for a goal it kind of yeah. helps you to be like okay i'll hit you later right now <laughs> always gotta do this like I'm... <laughs> well it is one of those it is one of those very unique things of of yes we're coming together as a group to do these things but I need to make sure that I'm focusing on me and make sure. Am I, yeah. Am am I I contributing everything I have to the group? Yes. That, that becomes the most important thing. Yeah. And and so while that sounds very self-centered, it's coming from that motive of if I'm not performing at my best. Yeah. I'm letting them down. I'm letting them down. I'm letting the group down. And all of a sudden that becomes the motivating factor of, I need to make sure that all this other stuff is out of my head, that I'm focused on this, that I'm practicing, that I'm showing up so that the group can be at its best. Yeah. And it's, it's I, one of those weird things of, yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it is a weird, it sounds counterintuitive, but you do have to kind of put that hat on sometimes of, I need to sit down. I need to focus on just how am I doing? Because how I'm doing is going to affect how we do. Right. Know? Yeah. Boom. Yeah. Them some knowledge on you. My goodness. Intros, <laughs> band introspection. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Goodness. Well. 
<laughs> there it is. Done. <laughs> yeah. I think that we'll just we'll just till next time. There you go. Stop the recording there. Okay. <laughs> Make a note. 124. <laughs> you uh, I, I was gonna even say uh I even uh did one of Mr. Shannon's old magic tricks. The blanket one? Yeah, the, the blanket. I, I took yeah. I had a I had a little handkerchief that I found. Uh I was like yeah, it was, it was, I did this at work, and so no one knew what I was doing. So, you guys, oh, it's gone. And then I, I told Shelby one of Mr. Shannon's stories of whenever he used to work at the circus. Uh huh. I'm curious about which story. You're oh, yeah, there, well, there's there. a lot. Yeah. There, there, that, was, that, was a, there was a pregnant pause, if ever there was one, because <laughs> oh, I was waiting. I well, was. I, did you tell I, her about the one where he got like peed on by the leopard? That, or that, that, that was the one that I told because I couldn't. Okay, I was, I, was like, <laughs> I was like, yeah, my instructor was peed on by a, like a leopard or something, and then I told him about like how he went on a date and accidentally grabbed the... her shoulder. Yeah, but it wasn't her shoulder. I know. Yes, yeah, that, that, I know. that's why it's funny. <laughs> Shut up. And he but, was telling the fu- a side note to that the fact that he was telling that to like middle schoolers <laughs> was just terrifying at the time. Me being like, nah, what? What is this? This is the nineties, that- man. You know, what? whatever. <laughs> man. But it it like it, that's one thing that it kind of breaks my heart with some of the places that I go for my job is like, I meet all these, like, and that was kind of the one thing that I didn't really want to talk yesterday is that I just met this really troubled kid with a pretty crappy home life. And I went to the the school office, like, do you guys have like anything this kid could be a part of? Cause I was like, he would do amazing in band. They're like, no, we don't have that program. I was like, why? Yeah. something and so that was just frustrating on a on a level like that mm-hmm. but meh. yeah 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 they were you know those those programs they had so much value and obviously you know we got a lot out of them um and to think that those shared experiences aren't aren't common across yeah it does it does make you feel make you feel really bad yeah but it was a lot of what makes what makes you feel really bad is when you're every time you see a marching band you look the first thing i do still today is look at their feet and yep. go, what are you doing no. <laughs> <laughs> yes the, one of the homeschool kids that i was talking about he's like it'd be really cool if we had white shoes it's like no 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 man you yeah. know like you can't do that with like, we can't show our feet and they're like okay i'm sorry you don't want, it, yeah. It, you don't want them to see your feet and big floppy things on your head so that they can see the bubble, 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 yeah. bubble, bubble, bubble. When I go to the Christmas parade, I always get elbowed by my wife because I'm always <laughs> like, I'm "Like, what is that diagonal?" She's like, "Shut up!" And I'm like, I'm like, Sorry, <laughs> but I can't look at their feet; they're out of step. Why? <laughs> <laughs> it's a. So it is for, the promise. Yeah. <laughs> get their feet. I do, I do that still. Still, last time I was at Christmas parade last year. Oh, I didn't go to this. No, I didn't go to this last one. The two years ago, I guess. I I, remember, I had those thoughts. I was watching the bands come by. I was like, "What are you doing?" What? Like, mm. No, it's bad. It's bad. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you know, it's ingrained in there. Won't go away. Probably ever. It's all right. <laughs> oh no. No, I guarantee you it won't. <laughs> guarantee you. <yeah. laughs> mm, goodness. Well. Yep. Okay. <laughs> you guys have a good week coming up? Uh, I guess so. I don't really know what's happening next week. Mystery week. Uh, Mystery. Mystery. So I am actually waiting for... Um, it's called Tulsa Honor Academy. It's actually, you give me a call. Is it a zoo? No. Okay. Uh, Are, it is, it's, oh. it's, it's it's a charter school in Tulsa. Oh. Um, for a few teaching jobs, and then so I was waiting. I was waiting on that, but that that's the only thing that I got coming up. That's quote unquote big. 
Well, that, that definitely qualifies. Yeah, it is. Pretty cool. <laughs> definitely. Where, uh, what positions do you know? So I already did a phone interview. Uh, and it's for so it's charter schools are weird. Yes. Because some of them don't go all the way up. They only do like yes. a certain a few certain grades. But so this one the this program they're actually adding on uh every year or every other year like a different grade level. And so this oh, okay. one, this one will be for a freshman and sophomore history teacher. Hmm. Um they don't have any athletics yet. Um, and so, but it, like they, they've had a middle Disc school golf. for like, they've had a middle school for a really, really long time and they're just now slowly implementing, oh, yeah. um, adding them up. Yeah. Yeah. High school stuff. And I, I kind of felt a little bad cause I was still at work when I did this phone interview, uh, with these people, <laughs> but I went, I went to the back little conference room areas to, um, to meet or to, to call this, this person. And she's she sent me an email. She's like, I was really impressed. I've already sent your stuff to the principal. Be prepared for a call. And I'm like, yes, do it. There you go. Do it now. <laughs> but... <laughs> oh, on second thought, Mr. Funkhauser, never mind. <laughs> well, I, I kind of I made a little... Do that. Do I, that. I, I kind of made a little boo-boo because I was like, well, you know, like, a lot of people, like, in school, like, they don't really, like, like history but they really don't like math and the lady's like well i actually teach math i'm like oh shit oh nah. no ah, <laughs> my bad my bad uh so yeah <laughs> but other than that i think the interview went really well now i'm just kind of Sweet. waiting for people to give me a holler that's exciting cool Thank you. very cool here we go yeah i'm not doing anything well that i'm aware of just a normal week doing <laughs> stuff Posting a big list of missing assignments. That's what I'm doing next week uh-huh. on Monday. Just like, hello, no. children. <clears throat> if your name is on this list, you have a problem. Uh, actually, it's not if your name's on the list once. I have some kids. If your name is on this list more than once, you have a problem. You have a problem at that point. <laughs> you have a big problem. Yikes. So, there's that. But, you know, what about you? I'm going down to. The yeah, we're gonna to doing be, things. Be it dads, uh, yeah. So be there till Monday, and then uh, come back home. That's a boot. It yeah, nice. About just it. cause, just going down, just for the fun of it. Yeah, uh, Lily didn't have school on Monday, and so I'm taking it off. I don't know why they don't have school, but is it some random Missouri holiday? I don't know. Maybe they're I, just like, yeah, we're closed. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I think I think she may be taking the the person who runs it, maybe taking a personal week. Yeah, I don't know. But is, is she in? Is she in? Not daycare. What is she in? Preschool. It's uh, a it. That, it's that's a. That's what the youth calling it now. <laughs> <laughs> huh? What? <laughs> it's a no. It's a it's a private preschool. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. What it's a. No, it's a yeah private preschool, but it's just it's half day and half week, so it's yeah. real introductory at this point. Oh yeah, real introductory. But yeah, but no, she is it, it is she is registered not as a a daycare, but as an actual preschool. Sweet, mm-hmm. I like it. Yeah, no, it's been it's you been French yet? huge. Yes, uh, sh- I mean, I mean already. Um, uh, yeah. thank you. One of those, no. <laughs> those, those bougie, uh, no, Aaron, they start with Latin. They start okay. with, Latin. yeah. <sighs> wow. <laughs> no, uh, no, it's been, it's been really huge for her. I've, I've noticed her, her storytelling and just, uh, mental organization when communicating has really increased, uh, as far as like planning goes with activities or how she presents information is has already gotten a lot better. Um, and, and she's one of the things that we really struggled with when we were working with her at, at home and doing more homeschool activities was the writing aspect. And that was something we just fought with her every single time we sat down to do that is she would do maybe one and then she move on to the next letter and just wouldn't and then it would end in tears and screaming and gnashing of teeth and then we'd put it away and so we just stopped 
doing writing activities because we didn't want that to become a negative association with her. And she writes all the time now. She's she's constantly getting a piece of paper and just writing random letters and going, what's this spell? I'm like, well, that's not an actual word. And she's like, oh, okay, what's this spell? I'm like, that's not a word either. But, you know, she's she's trying and that's been huge. Yeah. That's awesome. That is a that's one of the steps, right? Is the the like act like the play spelling, right? Mm-hmm. Kind of like a thing. Yeah. So it's good. Yeah. Yeah. And we're so we we encourage that and you know, we don't try and bring that up because again, when we did it last when we tried to bring it up, it was a no go. So it's like you you're gonna do your own thing. We encourage you and we'll continue to play along and provide all of the drawing and, and paper and stuff that you have free access to so you can do it as you wish yeah because then you can it's easier to transition into like hey why don't you make this this a letter uh-huh. if they're already kind of like exploring their own play spelling and, and all that like kind of stuff but when you it's it kind of makes the transition to what about a letter c, c look right. at this then it kind yeah. of like oh oh you mean this i'm already making that shape kind of so blah. yeah well and and we noticed it so th- of and this will probably be an ongoing theme with her in her life i know she's only four but like when like she didn't start talking until she was three like actual like just actually verbalizing stuff until she was three she was very delayed in that but when we would take her to speech therapists or speech coaches or our pediatrician they were like yeah there's nothing concerned here she knows exactly what you're saying and she would say words but if she couldn't say the word perfectly Oh, she didn't want to do she it. She wouldn't say it. She uh, wouldn't. I got you. So when you, one of the things that, you know, is very developmentally, one of those steps with kids is mimicking of like, yes. say dad. And the kid yeah. goes, ah, and you're like, great job. <laughs> she never did that. Just would not. You'd say, say ball. And she would just stare at you in the eyes. Now you could say, go get the ball. Or where's your ball? Or yeah. which, you know, you could say, which ball's bigger? Which ball's smaller? Which ball, you know, which color is the ball? She knew all of that, would just not verbalize it. And so when it came to writing, I feel like that was similar, very like, similar. She, she couldn't do it. She couldn't trace the lines exactly. So she just wouldn't do it. Yeah. And, or, or perform it perfectly. So she just wouldn't. And so encouraging this, as you m- mentioned, Brandon, the, this playwriting yeah (laughs) that's what it's called it's yeah it is there's a the the a lot of french schools actually do that in their art classes Mm. they do um they teach those like strokes but then they do it in the form of like picture drawing yeah right especially with the like the letter shapes like just like half circle or like the full circle or just straight lines and they make art with it Mm. and then they transition that art into letters because they're already familiar with how the those pencil strokes, strokes yeah function yep and so then they can just combine them in different ways to make the letters right because there's really only a couple that you need right for print writing you need like mm-hmm. two well mm-hmm. four, uh, four really yeah right <laughs> kind of it yeah yeah straight line curve squiggle right yeah it's like it. full circle half circle straight line bigger straight line <laughs> yeah and and, like an arch. Mm-hmm. Okay, got it. Right, done. And, the, okay. and that's what they. That's what uh, the the preschool has been doing is just working on strokes so that whenever they can do and like it's fully like they'll do they'll trace strokes with their fingers. They'll practice drawing with different strokes. They'll have their they'll position their body in different strokes to make letters. Yeah. You know, and oh, okay, like, like it's 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 full. So like when when you go to write that A, you, you know that in your hand, in your you yeah. can you can feel it you in your body it. and yeah. visualize it. And that's that's helped her push through that so that yeah. she she's just so much more comfortable with it than she was before. Does she is she like adapting well with like a lot of the kids also, or how's that looking? Oh, she's fine, but she's, yeah. Um, that was it's her brother that she beats up. It's fine. Yeah. That'll be <laughs> not, I don't know how we're going to do that. No one's going to start attending in the summer. Um, so <laughs> yeah. we don't know if we're going to do try and do the same class or do like a morning afternoon or we'll just that have to might see. be better. Yeah. <laughs> we're just going to have to see how it goes. But 
because I know it that might be she's... It might be good for him to get away from her, really. Yeah. Like, it, well, and, not, and so not yeah, it's, like beat it's, up by his older sister. <laughs> it's multiple. It's it's that's her space now. Oh yeah, that's, that's true that's too. So I don't want to feel like I'm imposing him on her space because yeah, that's she knows all because she's already been there. So that's yeah. that's the chair I sit in, and that's the person I talk to, and that's blah, blah, blah. and then he shows up, and then it's like, oh, younger brother, what and are then, you doing here? What are you doing here? I have to see you at home. And, I, and, I, yeah. and then I also want him it's to have a break his, from you. And I, yeah, his and own then, thing too. His yeah. own thing. I want him to have that experience of going yeah. through all of those same things. Um, so we'll see. We'll see uh, how, how that process goes. But she, she loves the kids. She knows all their names. She, she'll come home and tell stories of who was there, who wasn't there, what they did that day, um, all the activities. Uh, we'll, we talk about that over lunch or over. Yeah. Megan talks to her about that over lunch when they get back and then um, we recover it at dinner, talk about what her favorite part of the day was, who she played with. And she's, she's gotten really good at telling those stories as well. Um, and, and remembering. So we haven't had any, any concerns with that. Fortunately. Neat. Yeah. Neat. Mm-hmm. Um, all that fun stuff. Kids, am I right? Right. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> well, you guys have a good evening. Very good. Well, you guys enjoy the rest of your evening, and we'll talk again soon. All righty. Okay. Love you guys. Love, Love you too. You. Bye. Bye.